With us now, and I'm so glad they didn't have you two when I was in Congress. With us now, Laura Schwartz, former special assistant to President Clinton and Democratic strategist. So let me ask you, do you think YouTube is good for America? Yes, I do. And I think it's good for the candidates themselves as well. You know, you look back to 1992. And the Clinton campaign in 92 really revolutionized the video news release. But at that point, you had to videotape an event, take it into an editing suite, edit it for a few hours, make a package, send faxes and call around to all the news agencies in the country saying, hey, watch your satellite at these coordinates between 7 and 8 tonight. We're going to feed you a news release. And it but, cost tons of dollars. Now you just do a video, download your computer, edit it, and email it out, and it's free. But Laura, YouTube would have been a nightmare for Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton was a human highlight reel. I mean, whether you talked about his I didn't in hell or all those Jennifer Flower moments, could you imagine? I think YouTube would have actually hurt Bill Clinton in 1992 because of all of those embarrassing clips that could have been out there. So. Isn't it gotcha politics and isn't it all about embarrassing politicians and couldn't you look at that as being a bad thing? Well, you know, what I just explained is how to use it as a good thing. Now, as far as reality and politics and a reality show, I think it will put them more on guard, but in a good way. You know, you want to come off, you know, I always say people are voted into office on personality and then they're kept into office based on their policy. If they can show true personality to this demographic that they usually don't all get to go to, you know, John Stewart has done it brilliantly on Comedy Central. More people from like 18 to 24 year, year olds watch Comedy Central and the Jon Stewart Daily Show than they do the regular network news. This is another tool that they can use to tap into that. They'll be on guard, but I think if they play it right, they can really come through well. Now, speaking of embarrassing politicians, I want to show you another YouTube clip. And this one comes from a guy in Florida that talks about what life was like when he was in the military. Roll that clip. I grew up in Alabama. I understand, uh, I know this from my own experience, that blacks are not the greatest swimmers or may not even know how to swim. What, you know, what, what do people think? I just, I'm one of these people that believe if you say it and it's that stupid, you deserve to get busted. It's, it's, it's just like when I we agree. Ran, ran the, I ran, we ran these clips of the president or if we ran clips of Bill Clinton. I mean, if you don't like that being out there on the internet, then don't say it in the first place. Exactly. Keep your you mouth wonder shut. who says things like that. Really, I mean, it just—you've got to be aware in your surroundings. In every campaign I've worked on, and, and in the White House, you always, always take for granted that you are on camera. Everything you say or do can be heard at all times, and you just have to approach it like that. I mean, when you say something like that, sometimes it shows your true colors, and they're coming out, and we're going to realize that and vote on behalf of what you look like all the time. No no doubt about it. And of course, politicians can get in trouble for what they say, even when the camera's off. This comes from Washington Whispers, U.S. News and World Report, talking about George W. Bush around the White House that says this about him, quote, he loves to cuss, get a jolly uh, when a mountain biker wipes out trying to keep up with him. And now we're hearing that the First, frat boy loves flatulent jokes. <laughs> you know, what can you say? This guy spent more time at keg parties than he did at study groups in college. But even my friends and fraternities grew out of that at our five and ten year reunions. It really just shows, and I really do believe that the lesson to be learned here is next time you see the president, remember to shake his hand. Don't pull his finger. Well, whatever, Laura. You know, the thing is, though, it, it really does mean that as a politician, does it not? that you need to be on your best behavior, not only when you're in front of the camera, but also when you're in the Oval Office. And I'm always reminded of those stories about Ronald Reagan, my political hero, who would never even go into the Oval Office unless he was wearing a jacket because he thought it was disrespectful to the Oval Office. A lot of people see that as old fashioned, but I think people we elect to Congress and to the Senate and to the White House certainly need to understand that they work for us and they need to be on their best behavior. And if they screw up, we're going to hold them accountable, and the Internet allows Absolutely. us to do that. Well, you know, you're the dignity of this country. You're the face to the world as the president. You represent your state as a senator or a representative or as a governor. You are constantly not just representing yourself and maybe your dumb, stupid habits. You're representing the country, and you've got to take that seriously. That's why this guy should have left this at the door in private quarters, but come on. This is our face to the world. What, does he use these jokes to, to break the ice at the G8 summits? I mean, I really got to wonder. We don't know, and I certainly don't want to hear Chirac's jokes. Thank you so much, Laura Schwartz. <laughs> Thanks, Greatly Joe. appreciate you being with us.